My name is Robert Sumwalt, and I'm a board member with the National Transportation Safety Board. And with us today is Dr. Dan Bauer, who is the investigator in charge for this accident. Uh, what we'd like to do today is give you an update on the investigative activities that have uh, transpired since our last media briefing this time yesterday. The flight data recorder group has been working to validate and confirm the parameters from the flight data recorder. Uh, you may recall from yesterday that there are over 400 parameters on this flight data recorder and they have validated the initial set of parameters that will kind of sort of give us a look as to what's going on in the airplane. There's still plenty more work to do with the flight data recorder. We'll tell you what we know at this point. The first point is, is that the recorded cockpit flight control inputs and the aircraft control surface positions appear to correlate properly. And what this means is, is that the control inputs and the control surface response appear as expected. The engine parameters indicate normal engine operation. The autopilot was engaged until the last second of recorded data. Now, let me clarify this. The flight data recorder, excuse me, the flight data recording ended before the CVR, the cockpit voice recorder recording. The CVR continued to record for a few seconds after the FDR quit. And really, these are two separate pieces of equipment. One records cockpit communications, the other records aircraft data. They are two separate pieces of equipment. One quit recording a few seconds before the other. And so when I say that the autopilot was engaged until the last second of recorded data, that's not the same end of recorded data that we talked about yesterday. Because there is several seconds between each of the end of recorded data. The auto throttle, auto throttle was engaged through the end of the recorded, recorded data. The recorded airspeed was tracking the auto flight selected airspeed of about 140 knots, which is consistent with the expected approach speed. Yesterday, we, we discussed a sync rate alert that was enunciated and heard on the cockpit voice recorder. We also see indications from the flight data recorder that that alert was enunciated. Now, what we will be doing is we will be correlating several pieces of data. We'll be correlating the cockpit voice recorder data, the flight data recorder data, the radar data, that's the, the data that's recorded from the air traffic control radar system here in Birmingham, and other data sources that I'll speak to you about in just a moment. We'll be pulling all of these sources of data together to create a composite picture, a composite and accurate picture of what happened to this airplane. I'd like to now turn our attention to the, to the airport itself. Uh, yesterday, I mentioned that there was to be a flight check that we had, we had hoped to get in. The FAA would conduct a flight check of the airport navigational aids, including the Precision Approach Path Indicator lights, or the PAPI lights, um, that not all of that flight check was able to be done yesterday, but the FAA was able to flight check the PAPI system, the PAPI lights. And, and they found that the PAPI was within one one-hundredth of a degree of being properly aligned. 
we should have the full, the complete flight check package by midweek, uh, weather permitting. We are also obtaining airport surveillance video. We know of two of them at this point, and we've, we've uh, received those. There was one from the airport itself and one from the Alabama Air National Guard up on the north side of runway, runway 6 and 24. And both of these video sources appear to have captured the fire associated with the crash. I'll now speak about what we've done to learn more about the flight crew. We began interviewing pilots and training pilots who had flown with each of the pilots, with each of the accident pilots. And we have several more interviews scheduled that will occur over the next several days. As we do with any investigation, we are conducting a 72-hour history. We do this for all of our investigations. Go back for the previous three days and try and get a picture of the flight crew's mental and physical condition before the accident. And as part of obtaining that 72-hour history, between midnight and 2 o'clock this morning, because that's when these people were available because they're operating a nighttime cargo operation, between midnight and 2.30 this morning, 2 o'clock this morning, our investigators interviewed UPS employees and contractors who interacted with the crew as they began their duty day in Rockford, Illinois, and as they made stopovers in Peoria, Peoria and Louisville. We have, consistent with that, or in concert with that, we have interviewed the, the van driver who drove them out to the aircraft in Louisville. We know that they obtained keys for the sleep rooms in, in Louisville. UPS has sleep rooms available for their flight crew. We know they obtained crews, signed out, signed out keys for those rooms. We want to see if we can determine if they actually um, used those rooms. Tomorrow we will be examining a, an exemplar UPS A300-600 that will be parked here over the weekend. And in the coming weeks, we anticipate that we will do a flight test in a UPS A300 to see how this approach would be flown in that type of an aircraft and to learn more about UPS's instrument approach procedures. The aircraft. We, we have removed electronic equipment from the wreckage, electronic equipment that may have non-volatile memory that may be able to contain additional data on what this airplane was doing. We find oftentimes that the memory chips in some, some equipment uh, still gives us a lot of data. For example, the engine control module uh, that we know contains data about the operation of the engines. So we have obtained those memory chips from those pieces of equipment that we believe can give us additional information. The maintenance group has been working very hard in Louisville since 8 o'clock yesterday morning, scouring the maintenance records of this aircraft. And so far, they are reporting that all service bulletins and airworthiness directives have been complied with. And so far, they've identified no anomalies, no mechanical anomalies with the aircraft. And we believe that all aircraft components have been removed from all property not belonging to the airport. However, we would encourage uh, someone if they do, uh, if they do, if they have come across an aircraft part that has not been recovered, we would like to know about it. Our email address for receiving that information would be uh, please contact us at witness at ntsb.gov. Again, witness at ntsb.gov. 
there are several more days of on-scene activities. Our investigators will continue to be busy through the weekend and well into next week. We expect that the wreckage will, will be removed in about a week. I want to conclude my formal remarks by saying this will be the, the final on-scene press or media briefing here in Birmingham uh, and Eric will talk to you in just a moment about how future media updates will be provided from NTSB headquarters in Washington. But I want to make it known that just because there will be no more media briefings here in Birmingham does not in any way mean that our investigators won't continue to be here. They will continue to be working hard and they will be here for several more days. I want to emphasize that we're just on day four of the investigation. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, and this is just the very beginning of the investigation. Uh, this is going to be a months long investigation. The NTSB's mission, the whole reason that we're here, is to find out what happened so that we can prevent tragedies like this from happening again. That's the uh, end of my prepared remarks, and I will be glad to take your questions. Yes, sir. So, based on the, the autopilot being engaged, the autopilot being engaged, what does all this tell you? What does the fact that the autopilot being engaged and the autothrottles being engaged, what does that tell us? And we will be looking at UPS's procedures to see how they recommend or train for a non-precision approach like the ILS to runway 18. We will be looking at the UPS procedures to see how those procedures should be flown. Uh, as an airline pilot myself, a former airline pilot for 24 years, I can tell you that it is not unusual to fly an instrument approach using the automation. Any further questions? From listening to their conversations from what you had at this point in the cockpit, did they know what was going on? Were they trying to correct whatever problems they may have been experiencing before the crash? From, list, from the CVR transcript, can we tell if the crew was aware of, of what was going on? And that is exactly what we will be doing during this investigation to understand what the crew was doing and what they knew. There's a question right here. The, the question is, why was there no, as we talked about yesterday, there was no minimum safe altitude uh, warning or MSAW alert. And we will be looking uh, to understand, should, of an, should an alert have been enunciated? And if it should have, why was it not enunciated? So that is part of what we'll be doing. There's software that's programmed into that uh, system, and we want to understand everything we can about that. Let's see, I'll take a question here and then I'll come to you. Yes, sir. Are there any issues that need to be addressed in the wake of the fact that this is the third landing accident? in about a five or six week period of time. And I'll tell you that we are here to investigate the facts and circumstances and conditions surrounding this accident. And once we understand that, then we'll look to see if there are wider systemic issues that need to be addressed. There's a question here. Can you talk about the process, I guess, of reassembling the red plane? And I mean, is it being assembled here at the airport? Or do you just gather all these pieces Will we conduct an aircraft reconstruction? And typically, NTSB investigations do not reconstruct an entire piece of wreckage. What we may do 
is if we find a particular area of, of, of the aircraft that we need to reconstruct to better understand something about the wreck, about the, uh, the crash, we have the capability to reconstruct it. But um, that's something that we look at as we go along, and right now we're just collecting the facts. Once the airplane leaves here, it will remain under the NTSB's uh, custody, so we will have access to the wreckage until we release it. Uh, where is the aircraft going to be taken after it's removed from the from the wreck site? The actual location has not yet been determined. Okay, one one question here. Do the surveillance videos that I mentioned do they actually capture the 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 crash itself? And we've taken a preliminary look at those videos. Uh, we will take them to our lab, and, uh, and our, our uh, laboratory can do some amazing things. They will look at it frame by frame by frame to see exactly what is contained on that video. Just from a preliminary look, uh, we see the, uh, what appears to be the, uh, the fire after the crash. This will need to be, like everything else that we're talking about, this will need further um, further, further. This will require detailed, anal un detailed analysis. Oh, one more question. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Eric. We'll um, we'll explain to you the procedures for um, uh, keeping up with the the latest of, of this investigation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, in addition to following all uh, the progress on Twitter, our Twitter handle is at NTSB. We've also created a web page dedicated to this accident. If you go to our homepage at www.ntsb.gov and you click on uh, investigations and then major investigations, there'll be a uh, web page dedicated specifically to this accident. Everything that we issue will be put on that page. If it's not on that page, we have not issued it yet. And uh, once again, our Twitter handle is at NTSB. Thank you.